Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. Today, I'm kind of surprised with what we're bringing you. Today, we're going to be doing a Pool 2 Kazar Zoo. And whenever you first dip into Pool 2, you're seeing Killmonger all over the place. But as I've gotten further into Pool 2, I'm seeing a lot of Pool 3 decks because I'm at the end of Pool 2. Right now, we're collection level 474 at rank 87. We're seeing a lot of Pool 3 starter cards and things like that. We're starting to see a lot less Killmonger. And so I've been having a lot of success with bringing the Khazar Zoo archetype into Pool 2. Now, we did tweak it a little bit. We took out some of the cheeky things that let us skip all the way until the end of the game in favor of some kind of counterplays. So one of the other things that we're seeing a lot of in this meta is a lot of destruction cards, a lot of pool two and pool three destruction archetypes. And so to kind of counteract that, we've added in armor and Cosmo. Not only does that disrupt destruction decks, but it could also protect our one cost cards. So we could do an armor in the Angela lane. We could drop a couple of our one costs there. We could do Cosmo, follow it up with a Kazar and a Blue Marvel. We no longer have to worry about Enchantress countering our ongoing cards. And then we can just fill up the rest of the board. We, we have a pretty good amount of upside and a pretty good power push in all three lanes. Now, in my testing this morning, I've gained about four ranks, so about 40 cubes. And it's all seemed very, very promising. So I did want to showcase this deck to you guys because I didn't think it was going to be very viable in pool two, but it turns out that it might be. And, and if you're in pool one and you're looking for a Khazar Zoo build, I'm going to leave a link to my most recent guide down below for the Khazar Zoo pool one archetype. Now, if you're moving into pool three, you can do a couple of things. You can add in a, instead of the Korg, you can add in a Mojo. That's going to give you a even bigger push in one lane if the opponent has capped out that location. Or if you get lucky and you draw into Sarah, you can add in Sarah, you can add back in your strong guy, your blade, to really have a last turn big, huge power push to be able to surprise the opponent. Now, I don't have one of those built out, but the idea remains the same. You keep a lot of your low-ish cost cards. You add in Sarah, Blade. You might even cut the Kazar and the one cost slots. You can do a lot of two cost cards at, in your Sarah meta, but I think it's a, a mixture. If you guys want me to cover that type of build, let me know and I will do a video on it. But as of upgrading this one, really Mojo in the slot of Korg is really all you would want to do. Um, other than that, you want to keep your one cost cards to have plenty of cards to be buffed by Kazard, keep your curve low. And this one I think could hold its own against some pool three decks, not if they get a high roll, but you can counter any big Black Panther decks that you see. You can counter any kind of really strong, big minion push. So if they're doing a destruction or an arrow displacement, you can counter that with your Cosmo. If they're running an ongoing deck, this one is not going to be able to hold its own. So if they're running a Patriot deck that has a really high, high roll, you're going to have to retreat out of those. But that's that's more pool three concerns. Let's focus on the pool two build. And so the idea of it is pretty simple. You flood your one cost cards out onto the board. Sometimes you hold and skip turns where it puts you at risk if you put them out onto the board early. You typically want to do your Angela on two if you have it. If not, an armor in a lane is great. You can do Cosmo if you're planning on doing your Kazar, your Iron Man, your Blue Marvel as a way to win one of the lanes. You just have a lot of flexibility and it really depends on what you draw into, but you are always going to draw into something that is worth playing and pretty valuable to give you a decent power push. And so let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I'll show you how to navigate it. All right, so first up we have Joshua. A lot of times if you start with Angela in your hand, you'll want to skip on turn one. But the exception to that is if you have your Korg or your Iceman, because those are going to add some disruption. The earlier you can get those onto the board, the bigger or more guaranteed impact they might have. And so we play, ooh, this is an interesting one. Because if we win Baxter building, we lose Bar with no name, unless it can get changed. And so I'm actually going to pivot into competing for this far right lane. Because if I can win this one by enough and I just give them this lane, then we'll, then we'll win this one and this one. Baxter building with Bar with no name is always an interesting combination. Um, and so we are going to lean into the Angela in the far right and hopefully find some upside there. And so they play a Sentinel in the Baxter building. We play our Angela. We can do Cosmo now as a way to stop any kind of enchantresses. And what we're really digging for and looking for here is going to be our Iron Man. Our Iron Man is going to let us elevate this power level in this lane. 
very, very drastically. And if we can do that, then we can afford to lose this one and this one, and we'll be perfectly fine. So I'm actually going to skip on four, even though we have resources to play. We don't necessarily want to put ourselves out there on the on the limb or on the line. So they do a ooh, they do a collector, an agent thirteen, and a nightcrawler. So this looks like a very standard devil dino deck, which is very very scary. So this would be four power. We're gonna draw Chavez next turn. This would be four power. This one could be four power as well. But it could actually be five if we do the Kazar. That's gonna assume that we lose this lane, which I think we will. And so let's do this. It's not great, but we could pull it off. Uh, it's definitely definitely not ideal. So then they push an Iron Man into Baxter Building, which is so crazy to me. This could, I mean, this could be a bot. But when you see Bar with No Name, unless they have a way to change it, pushing that much power in Baxter Building just seems just seems wrong. So they could have five cards plus their Devil Dino. So that would be. That would be a 13 power devil dino plus the two here which would be 15 plus the three here so which would be 18. if we do our chavez here we should overcome that potential power in lemuria as long as they don't have a way to change bar with no name i think we're perfectly fine i think we're safe here oh they could do devil dino oh devil dino and an uh, agent 13 but they don't so we will take the easy win this one was all about paying attention to the lanes and playing within those to our advantage and so that brings us up to 87.2. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, so next up we have Buckwheat. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Little Rascals, but when I see when I see that, all I can think of is, uh, is all of the quotes from that movie that I used to do whenever I was little. And so they play a Korg first off. It tells me that they're very unlikely to be running a Killmonger. And so let's do our... Angela into Xandar. We do have Iron Man as a way to kind of push that power up over the edge. I don't necessarily want to play for Necrotia because we're fighting against ourselves at every single step of the way. And so we're investing a lot of resources that we don't, don't really have to do. And we draw into Korg's Rock, unfortunately, but I think that's okay. Let's do our Nightcrawler and our Ant-Man. We do have Kazar. We have Iron Man. We can move Nightcrawler out on one of these last few turns. I think we're going to let them have Necrotia. Uh, with a with the Angela lane, we typically want to kind of play away from that space, if at all possible. So they storm the Necrotia lane. Very interesting. Okay, so they have the one cost cards, and it looks like they now have uh, they have storm. So this could be a Jessica Jones. It could be a Sunspot into like an Infinite. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential play lines that they have here. So let's do let's do Kazar into Oscorp Tower. We're gonna kind of spread our power a little bit. And we're going to see what they what they end up dropping. So they do armor in mid, um, which is fine. And then scorpion to hurt our cards by one, uh, which that does hurt more than than they know. With Iron Man, that hurts us quite a bit, unfortunately. And so I think what we do here, I think we do our blue Marvel. We could either do blue Marvel or Iron Man this turn. I think we do blue Marvel as a way to kind of threaten that power across the board. If we need to do an Iron Man, It'll be a zero power Iron Man. We could move our Nightcrawler over. We could play a rock here to push our power up a little bit further here. Um, but I think we, I think it gives us some flexibility. So they skip here. We have to anticipate the Infinite play. If I was them, the Infinite play would come down into Oscorp Tower. So this is going to be 14. This is now going to be another eight. So it's going to be 22. This is going to be, um, I don't know, some. this is going to be something. I don't think it's 22, but I, I am under the impression that they play their their Infinite into the Oscorp Tower. Um, I think we have too much of a high power threat in Xandar for them to play it over there. I could be wrong. The read could be incorrect, but that's what we're going to lock in with. I anticipate the one card drop of Infinite into Oscorp Tower, but with our Iron Man, with our other cards, we're going to be able to elevate past that point. And so there is the Infinite with the heads up play, paying attention to the fact that they skipped on turn five into turn six, allowed us to overpower their Infinite push just barely. It took all it took all of our all of our resources, but we were able to just barely reach over 22 here. And then, of course, our 15 was able to outpower the Korg in Xandar. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. So next up, we have BABX and with the Elysium. A lot of times we are 
we we want to flood our cards out onto the board. Now, one of the cards I am going to play is Korg. I should have played it this turn, but unfortunately I held it. That is the one of the free resources that we do want to push because it's going to give us, it's going to shuffle a rock into their list. It's going to potentially disrupt their play line a little bit. The rest of the cards we kind of want to hold until we have a strategic reason to drop them. So I'm going to do Cosmo into Nid of Lear. I plan on eventually doing Iron Man here because Iron Man will elevate the plus five power from Nid of Lear. So every plus five is now going to be plus 10, which is, of course, massive. That's going to be a huge Nid of Lear location. Then at that point, we really only need to focus on one additional location. And so I'm going to drop Cosmo. That way the opponent can't change this location. They can't Enchantress this location once we once we have resources here. Unless they have an Iron Man of their own, they're not usually able to compete with the power that we're able to output in Nid Valir. And so we now have the Cosmo. They're not going to be able to do a last turn Heimdall. They're not going to be able to move their multiple man across the board, which is absolutely fine. And so we have our armor. We can protect a lane, but we don't necessarily need to do that just yet. We have our, a free squirrel and a free rock. I'm going to hold those. It's only turn three. The, the the instinct is to just flood them onto the board, but we want to make sure that we see the opponent only has one card left. This is the only card that they have in their hand because they flooded that power onto the board. And so now it's just whatever they top deck. They can't strategically position their their power. And so they're at a and so they're at a slight disadvantage because of the fact that they were flooding everything they had onto the board so quickly. So we're actually going to snap into that. I think as soon as they see the Iron Man here, they're probably going to retreat. Let's wait one more turn. Let's wait one more turn before the Iron Man. We can do Iron Man on five, um, and I think that's going to be just fine because we have all of these uh, zero, all of these free resources that we can throw onto the board. Let's do Iron Man mid. We can do armor into the far left. They're potentially going to accidentally cap out this location this turn, depending on where Strange Academy sends their cards. And if they f and if they cap this one out, we know exactly how much power they have. Or oh wow. So they do a Heimdall on turn five. Interesting. And so now both of these locations are fully capped out. Strange Academy is not going to be able to send their cards anywhere, but we're okay with that. We know that they cannot get over 32 power here. So all we need to do is play, I think, a rock. Just playing a rock here is going to be enough for us. Um, and so Elysium is going to allow us to do a lot of push on this last turn. So we can do... What could they, what could they have? They... I don't know what they could have, but a rock here is going to be 10 power, so that's going to push us to 36. We can do a Kazar, we can do a Squirrel Girl, and we can do a Nightcrawler over here. We're, we're, we're of course going to lose the Strange Academy lane, uh, but this is going to be 7, so that pushes 7 more power here, which is over the required level that we need. But I think just for good measure, we're going to put Nightcrawler into this lane. This gives us one additional power here just in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong. So let's go ahead and lean in here. They could have an Iron Man. I just don't see them having any other big play. If they have a Killmonger, that is going to surprise the heck out of me. Um, but otherwise, they shouldn't have anything that buffs their other lanes. And so they do have a pretty big power push in Strange Academy, but it's not going to be enough. For them to overcome it so we have the squirrel girl that will push more power into nid of Lear. we overcome that one very very drastically and then the night crawler is enough to push us over the limit in elysium giving us the eight cube win against what looks like a really stacked deck but iron man really helped us elevate our power level and make nid of Lear an, an easy easy win compared to what it could have been and so the cosmo made sure that we didn't have to worry about enchantress or shang chi and then we just were able to hold our power out until it was advantageous for us to flood it onto the board. And so with that 8 cube victory, we are going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.